And here it is, the AK Racing Master Series Max Gaming Chair. And I knew this was gonna be a big box, but wow. Look at that. Pretty giant. So I'm gonna bring this giant box inside and get it opened up, and then we're gonna put it together and check it out. Hey everybody, Nate Lee here, and we are about to put together the AK Racing Master Series Max gaming chair. Now, as I mentioned in my last video, this channel is headed in a whole new direction. I started this channel to promote my music lessons and to put up some useful stuff for people who play the mandolin and fiddle, and I am totally still doing that, but it is all over at my Play Nately channel, and you can find the link for that right here or here, or maybe I'll put it down here. You can find the link down here and also down in the description. So if you're here looking for mandolin and fiddle content, musical stuff, instructional stuff uh, for you as a player, then go over to the Play Nately channel. And this channel is going to head more in a direction of my interests as related to running a music business. So things for music teachers, things for traveling musicians, and in this case, putting together a chair that I'm going to use in my teaching studio. Now, I have high hopes for the Max. All I know about it is what I've read in the reviews, and I'm 6'3 and 200 pounds, and I needed a chair that was pretty big, so up till now, I've been using a chair like this. And they're super comfortable at first, but they're not really meant for teaching 20 plus hours of music lessons every week. And between teaching all those music lessons and two to three hours a day practicing chess and a bunch of time spent editing videos for my upcoming online course and for things like this, uh, that's just a lot of time spent in a chair and chairs like this one here, they're just not made for it. So I wanted something that was going to work great for the music lessons thing, but also double as something I can use for chess and I like to play Call of Duty and all of that. And I found most of the chairs were not meant for people my size, and really there's not much of anything meant for people my size. So from what I've read, this chair is giant. The seat is 20 inches deep, it's 24 inches wide. People say it's like a throne, so we'll see. Maybe by the time I'm done, I'll look like Daenerys Targaryen. So let's open it up and find out. We're gonna put it together. At this point, you know as much as I know about this, this uh, assembly process. I haven't even opened the box yet, just got it inside. So we're going to open it up, start taking some pieces out, and figure out what's involved, how to put it together. I'll walk you through what I'm doing as I figure it out and put it together, and then try it out and give you a review of what I think of the chair. They're not cheap, so it's really nice to have some ideas what you can expect in the chair. And when I was doing research, I didn't find a lot of YouTube videos about this chair. Plenty of Amazon reviews, not a lot of YouTube videos. Speaking of YouTube videos, if you wouldn't mind clicking that like button down below, that would really help this channel out a lot. It's just a really easy way to support the channel that doesn't cost you anything. And maybe consider clicking the red subscribe button as well. That would be really awesome. So let's open the chair. All right, the box is open. And the first thing we have here is the ceiling fan component of the chair. And I think there's going to be a lot of stuff in here, so um, I'm going to try to get it all out and not spend too much time on this video of me unpacking it. Uh, so let's grab the next thing. All right, so this chair is not going to be small. I was really hoping my head would actually be able to rest on the headrest, and it looks like that's going to be a possibility here. As I mentioned, I'm 6'3", and it'd be great if I could lean back and uh, play Call of Duty. Probably won't be leaning back teaching music lessons a whole lot. Um, but I like what I see so far. You know, I'm not a small guy and a lot of chairs make me feel hemmed in in the sides and in the seat. And I think this one is not gonna do that. So I don't think we'll need this first. I'm gonna set it aside. Well, this just got real. This is a large chair. <laughs> I'm surprised. Now I've seen videos of people sitting in it um, I think it's going to look a little smaller put together because right now we're seeing the, not just the seat area, but the area where the back is going to be installed. Um, but if that gives you an idea right there how big it is, hopefully you're at home shopping trying to figure out how big this chair is. 
Uh, it's large. If you're a smaller person, you're probably going to get lost in this chair. Um, but, you know, it also has a lot of... Gosh, this is heavy. The chair's supposed to be 60 pounds total. Uh, so, anyway, if you're a smaller person, you might get lost in the chair, but it's also supposed to be really good for people who like to maybe pull a leg up on the chair, sit any way except for just sitting straight forward. And uh, so, you know, you do you. For bigger people, you're going to be good with this chair, I think. This is plenty of room. So, wow, I'm just still a little bit overwhelmed. So here we've got the backrest and the headrest. I'm interested to see if the backrest works well for me. Um, I had read in some of the reviews that some people didn't feel like the backrest was useful. They ended up just taking it out, but it is removable. Same for the headrest. Again, I don't think I'll be getting to use the headrest much teaching music lessons. Uh, nobody wants their teacher to be all like, like this while they teach them. Um, but I'm imagining for chess and for Call of Duty, that's going to be real nice. So we'll just set these aside as well. I don't think we need these to last. And now there's a box that I'm guessing has hardware in it, and we'll find out if I brought any of the right tools. Uh, luckily, I have a garage full of tools because you can't have too many tools, in my opinion. I'm a huge fan of Craftsman tools. A little outdated, they should be called craftsperson tools, but I really like craftsman tools and uh, used them forever and been in the process of collecting the whole set. So let's see what's in this other box. All right, pretty sure this is going to be hardware. I'm kind of running out of places to put stuff, so the old ceiling fan. I'm just uh, really running out of places to put stuff. All right, this one goes back in the box. And here we go. And I just cut this open. This Craftsman box knife, I've really liked. My dad gave me this for Christmas, I think it was. And it works really well. Kind of stopped using pocket knives nearly as much as I got this thing. All right, so this is the hardware, the casters, all of that, the instructions. So I'm going to take a minute and just open this up because this is probably going to be a pretty boring part of the unboxing and set it all out and then we'll get started with the assembly. So these are all the parts that came with it. So we've got five casters, little assembly toolkit. So all my screwdrivers were probably uh, unnecessary, but uh, you know, I like to look at them. So this assembly kit, it comes with only three bolts and an Allen wrench and a Phillips head. So I'm curious, does it really go together with only that? I guess we're about to find out. Um, it's got these two plastic things. <laughs> it's got these two plastic things. I don't know what they do. Um, we've got what is clearly inspired by a floor jack, this thing. This is going to cover, it's funny, they installed one of these on the right side, but this is going to cover the hinge assembly on the left side. We've got a piston here, and from what I've heard and read, these pistons are really strong, so the chair is not supposed to sink under you uh, up to 400 pounds. So that's something that is supposed to be uh, extra different about this chair compared to others in the line and even other brands. And then it's got this thing. Um, I don't think it's for using. I think it's just for looking through. Uh, but we'll find out what they want to do with it. So now we're just going to start reading the instructions. I haven't really looked at this yet. So for the first step, you're going to need the Allen wrench that comes with the chair. And there are two bolts on either side of the bottom of the chair back right here. And we're going to be loosening those. It does not say how far to loosen them. And in fact, they're already loose enough that I can turn them by hand. And uh, I guess we'll just have to wait and see how far we needed to loosen them. I'm expecting that something kind of snaps onto it. So we'll just pull those back a little. I'm not going to take them all the way out. 
So I've looked ahead in the instructions and we're going to be putting this chair back onto these metal bars right here and clearly these bolts need to come all the way out so I'm just going to pull those out there's two washers on each so make sure you don't lose those and keep track of the order they're put on there if you've already lost track of that order and you're panicking a little bit the smaller washer goes toward the head of the bolt and the bigger washer goes toward the tip of the bolt, the part that's going into the bolt hole. All right, so now we're ready to install the chair back. Make sure that these two metal brackets here are pointed up. Now on mine, one of them is very loose and the other is not moving. Uh, so if yours is the same way, mention it down in the comments. I'm really curious what, uh, <laughs> if everybody's chair is like this. Um, while you're doing that, if you wouldn't mind tapping that like button, it really helps out the channel a lot. I'll be doing some more stuff like this too, so subscribe if you want to see more of that. Hit the notification bell. YouTube will let you know every time I post a video. So we've got this setting up in here. And now, I'm just gonna put these bolts through the bolt holes. And little trick with bolts, screws, anything like that. When you put it in, turn it the wrong way. So it's righty tighty, lefty loosey is the way that a bolt or a screw or anything goes, unless it's a rare uh, left hand bolt. Uh, so you find the bolt hole and then turn it slightly to the left and then turn right. And this is going to give you the best chance of getting it seated in the threads and it decreases the likelihood that you're gonna cross thread. So if you don't know what a cross thread is, that's where the bolt is in the bolt hole crooked and it ends up just stripping off all the threads. You end up with what's called a stripped out bolt and that's really bad. It's a huge pain to fix it. Now, while I was talking about that, I tightened the top one up pretty tight. I bet I'm gonna to have to loosen that. So good general rule when you're putting in multiple bolts is don't tighten them up right away because you may need to shift things around a little bit. And if you tighten it up right away to even just hand snug, then you're, end up, you're gonna end up having to loosen it back most likely. Now, it's gonna take a little wiggling the chair around to get everything lined up. That's pretty normal for installing anything. This top one's being kind of a pain. I know the bolt and bolt hole are good because I just turned it out of here a little while ago. All right, got it seated. Try to get the bottom one in there now. I'm having to pull down on the left side in order to get the bolt holes low enough. And I think that's just because I chose this side second. And to help with that, I'm just going to loosen down this side even more. I'm not sure how much of a difference that's going to make because it's pretty loose. At this point, if you're starting to get frustrated, take a deep breath, walk away from it if you need to. I'm just going to struggle with it for a while, and then if it still seems to be a problem, I'm going to look and see if some of the leather is blocking that bolt hole. In fact, I'm going to do that now. So, special tool you can use for this it's called a screwdriver. I'm going to get to use my screwdrivers in this project. Ah, I found the problem. The leather is blocking it a little bit, uh, but the main thing is you need three hands to do this. <laughs> um, I think I'll be able to pull it off with two, but to get it all aligned, 
You need three, I think. <laughs> now the rule with screwing anything is it needs to go in easy. And you shouldn't use a wrench at first. That's because you could end up stripping out the bolt hole. So once you've got it started, then you can use your wrench. Now every now and then you're going to run into just a little stuck spot. And when that happens, it's okay to just tweak it with the wrench a little bit, but if it doesn't turn easily, then something's wrong and that bolt's probably not in the hole. So now we're just going to go ahead and tighten it up. Not all the way yet, we're just making them a little more snug. And bring them down gradually. So tightening them all up until they're close, but not hard to turn. Again, that just helps you. Allen wrench is not great. Uh, not great at all. In fact, this Allen wrench does not fit in this one bolt hole. I'm going to have to improvise a little bit uh, because this wrench doesn't fit in two of my bolts. I'm going to check one thing. There is this Phillips head screwdriver. Maybe this is sized for it because it is hex shaped. <laughs> no, it's too small. So if you're getting this chair, <laughs> you might want to grab a set of Allen wrenches first. Uh, you can get them pretty cheap at Harbor Freight or somewhere like that, or you can buy a nicer set if you want. I'm just going to go grab mine and then we'll finish putting this chair together. I'm just going to take a guess and go metric because so many things are. In my opinion, it would be better if everything was metric. Um, used to uh, wrench a lot on things and found that it's really hard to to add things up when they're fractions and all kinds of uneven numbers uh, but with the metric system it's just really easy to add up in your head it prevents a lot of problems and mistakes all right so this one kind of fits we're going to go one smaller which i am guessing is going to be way too small and if it doesn't fit we'll go to the standard set oh, too small Ha, we have a winner. Uh, so this one is standard, and the size is 7 30 seconds. Now, if you didn't have any of these at all, any of these wrenches, you probably could get it installed with a pair of pliers or channel locks. But that's a pretty major oversight from the manufacturer to include tools but not include one for the size of their bolts. It kind of makes you wonder if they changed their bolts and just used whatever they had left to ship this chair. So weird. Oh, this one will turn this one. It's just the wrench that gave me is a tiny bit too big to put together the left side. Now this is a $400 chair. Uh, I expect better for that. And it was only 400 because of this color. So it goes up to about 550 if you want other colors. So that is a major thing to put on the cons list that I would expect better spending this much money. Now, luckily, I have a way around it. So again, we're just gradually tightening down. The right side is snug now. Just bringing up the left side. All right, so it's pretty snug on both sides. Don't go cranking on it until later if you know you need to crank on it. Uh, it's got these lock washers here and it's double washered. It's probably gonna hang on pretty well. Uh, so I wouldn't worry about having to really crank on it, but you can check when you're done. In fact, it's best to check when you're done before you go cranking on it in case you need to move things around or even take it apart. So now, look next to the instructions. So far, they've done a good job with these instructions. It is all pictures, but they're good pictures. So we've installed the seat back. We've tightened up both sides. And now, we 
we've got these bolts it wants us to put in, I think. <laughs> Just said the instructions are so good and now I don't know what they're telling me to do. All right, so I figured it out. They're telling us to put these on to cover that bracket that's sticking up, which makes total sense. Uh, if I looked at the picture closer, I would have seen that, but I was really focused on the picture of the wrench. <laughs> um, I'm a little preoccupied with wrenches. Is that the right arm? Well, it's the left arm, but you know. Uh, so now that I know exactly what we're trying to do, put one of these on. So it's shown the left side first. I'll go ahead and put that on the left side. It is telling me to put both of these on. Um, I'm not sure which goes first. I'm going to try this first. I'll let you know what happens. Um, we are using these little bolts that came with it, these little black bolts. And the Phillips head Allen wrench, the hex side of it fits in these bolts. So that's going to be your tool for that. I'm just looking at this one here to see what it should look like. So it looks like it should be going on like this. So make sure the words AK Racing are readable on the left. If they're upside down, you're putting it together wrong. So it looks like it's going to be easier to put this on first, even though we have this on first and this side. Um, it looks like it's actually quite a bit easier to put this on first on the left side. So we're going to go ahead and install that. Grab an extra bolt, we'll install the other piece. Alright, now that we've got that in there, I'm just going to go ahead and tighten it up, not too tight in case this is the wrong way to do it. And now we're going to take the other little black bolt, we're going to put it through the hole in this, so it should be turned that way. We're going to snap it on, I'm going to screw that into that little hole right here. So I think I've got this right. It looks like the long skinny one goes slightly under this big fat one here. And I'm going to refrain from completely tightening those up until I'm sure about that. So now we're going to come over to the one on the right. And here on the right, this one is already installed. And it doesn't look like it comes off easily, if at all. So we're going to have to finagle the long skinny one into this spot slightly under it. And this has just reminded me um, among all the things this comes with, it comes with some white gloves for assembly. So I guess if you have really dirty fingers, you can wear these white gloves. Or you could just wash your hands, that would work fine. Um, if your tools are dirty, white gloves aren't going to help anyway, because the white gloves will get dirty. So maybe this is for uh, when a store buys one of these and wants to install them. Um, let's just check them out. <laughs> doesn't even really fit on my hand. But there you go. You can wear those if you want to look like Mickey Mouse. All right, back to assembly. Snap that on there. And just set it right down like that. Turn it a little bit, angle it, it'll fit in there. And then snaps right on. And now we're going to take the last one of these little bolts and put it in the bolt hole like that. I didn't follow my own rule of turning it left. I don't have a lot of left hand dexterity. Let me just try and switch. I can play an instrument great with the left hand, but when it comes to this kind of stuff, I'm very right handed. So there we go. Turned it left, got it seated. Now we're ready to use the wrench. I discovered that you can actually use the uh, Phillips head end of this. It's just wide enough that it works as a hex too, so that's a little easier. And we're going to tighten that up, but again, 
not super tight. Now before I put these on, I made sure I was satisfied with the tightness of the bolts under it. I guess could have mentioned that, um, but if you're not satisfied with the tightness of the bolts, you can take this off real quick and get extra practice, tighten up the bolts under it, and you can always take that apart if you need to and fix it later. It comes apart pretty easy and it wasn't hard to put together either. So next thing. So now it wants us to loosen these bolts and these are the single bolts here. So not the set of four bolts holding the arm on, but the bolts that are all by themselves. Now the instructions only show one up here and it does not show a bar down here. And we have a bar down here on, these, on this chair. And based on the, the photo or the drawing in the next section, we're gonna need to take out the bolts on both of these. So again, it's just pictures. It wasn't instantly clear that we needed to take them out. And in that situation, always just loosen it first till you're sure. Now these bolts are similar to before, except there's a third washer. So the little washer goes toward the head of the bolt and the two big washers go toward the end of the bolt. And don't take those off, but in case you already have, that's how they go back together. We're going to pull all four of those bolts. Now these were hand tight. It shows using the wrench, but I was able to pull them out by hand. But if you were going to use the wrench, it's the bigger one that fits. And it does seem to fit all of these bolts. So that's good. Less of them where we have to improvise. So now we're going to install this big heavy thing. And from the picture, looks like it needs to go this way. So here, like that. The chair's laying on its back. And this isn't gonna be the easiest one person job ever, but if you can go ahead and get two of those bolts in, That'll help hold it. Just don't put the full weight until it's tightened up a little bit. That way you don't put stress on those first few threads. Now here I am going to use the wrench, not because it's hard to turn. I've already put them in by hand, but because it's easier to turn it quickly while I'm holding up this heavy thing here. All right, now for the bottom bolts. And <laughs> of course the bolt holes on this thing are small enough that this is not aligned. I'm actually gonna have to loosen this a little bit and I'm gonna have to hold this up by hand while putting in the bottom bolts too. Uh, that is completely unnecessary. I mean, it's probably in there so you can easily adjust, but why not just manufacture it to where it's going to be adjusted right in the first place? Now I have to worry about if I have these aligned right. Overall, this installation is better than most things that I've put together. The instructions are pretty straightforward, especially if you look a couple moves ahead. All right, so the question is, where do I put this? Because there's oval holes on this big thing, and there are smaller round bolts in them. So for now, I'm letting it just hang on its weight here. If I find out later that I need to shift it up, I'm just gonna loosen these bolts. But I'm gonna start with the easiest solution. Seems most likely. We're just gonna apply Occam's razor here. Should also be a great name for like a shaving company. All right, now these are on. Again, don't completely crank on this. Make them firm, but don't crank on this until you're sure it's together correctly. And then you'll need to make sure you're happy with how tightly you have cranked on it to make sure that it's going to support you. So don't just go by how much I'm tightening these because I might tighten them a bunch later on after I get it together, start to sit in it. So make sure after it's all put together that everything's as tight as you think it should be. So now it wants us to get this piston and it wants us to get this thing 
And I'm not sure exactly how it's telling us to install this. Because it makes it look like this thing goes here. The piston goes in after it, but what makes it stay on there? That's the question. So sticking this in the hole, I don't see any threads or anything. I mean, I've puzzled over this for a while. Um, if this doesn't connect somehow, um, then I'm wondering what holds the chair together. So I'm looking forward to the exciting conclusion after we install the bottom of it to see how this works. So we put that in there. Again, it doesn't seem to screw in at all. And now I'm going to grab the bottom. So now installing the casters and they just push right in. So there's this hole here. You take one and it looks like there's a little snap ring on here. It looks like you would take that off. Like a lot of things you put together, you'd take off the snap ring, put it in and put it back on. There's no place to do that. And these are hard to push in at first. Uh, so it's going to seem like they don't go, but you take it and you just push so it snaps in. Now this is a lot easier to do on a table surface, so I'm just going to snap in the rest of them real quick and then we'll continue the installation. Alright, so the casters are on. It was not easy with a couple of them. It really took some pushing. I was about to go get out the rubber hammer, which was not my preference because you could break these. Uh, but finally got them in there. The good news is I don't think they're coming out. Now the last thing here is we're just going to put this thing on this pole right here. And that is uh, another thing that doesn't look like there's anything holding it together. So now, since that does seem to be the case, I'm going to set this down on the floor and then we'll go from there. So the chair is together. It's over there just off camera. Uh, what I tried first was taking the base and putting it down and then lifting the chair onto it. But since I couldn't see what I was doing, I couldn't find the hole and couldn't put it on there. So if you had somebody to spot you, that would work just fine. Um, but if you don't, you can do what I did, which is I laid the chair on its back and then I took the base and held it up sideways, lifted up the chair, and then was able to put the base in the hole. And then you can just grab it like this and turn it upright. So I just got down on the floor, grabbed it and turned it. Not ideal by yourself, but also if you're a bigger person looking for a chair that fits a bigger person, your arms are probably long enough to actually do this effectively. Uh, so I sat in it. Initially, I really like it. It was comfortable. The back right now is set fully straight up, which I think I'm really going to like for teaching. The chair I had, it really didn't allow me to sit back and support my back very well. So I was spending all my time holding myself up or leaning forward on my desk. It wasn't great. So it looks like this is going to work really well. The one thing I'm not sure about is I play the fiddle as well as the mandolin and I'm wondering if that right arm is going to be in my way when I play the fiddle. But as I was putting it together, I did notice that I could remove that arm if I wanted to on the right side. So I may do that. So next, I'm just going to take it upstairs to my teaching studio and put it in there. And then we're going to have a look at some more features of the chair and I'll give you a review on what the chair itself is like. So for the installation overall, you're going to be able to put it together even if you have minimal experience putting things together. Um, the instructions, they get a solid B. Not great, but I've seen way worse. So giving the instructions a B. Um, not having that little wrench that I needed, that could have been really bad if I didn't already have a full complement of tools in my garage. So hopefully if you're watching this, you're watching it before you order the chair and you can go buy an Allen wrench set if you don't have one. So that was a major strike against it. But overall, it was an easy installation process compared to anything. So they get a B plus just for the whole installation process. I'm impressed. So let's take that chair upstairs, check it out, and I'll give you a review of what I think of sitting in the chair, playing music in it, playing Call of Duty, playing chess, all that kind of stuff. So I'll see you up there. Hello again everybody. I decided to wait a little while before filming the review part of this video so I could spend more time with the chair. Now I did make sure to wear the same shirt though so nobody can tell. Now I've spent five days with this chair and I've taught quite a few music lessons in it. It's been amazing for that so that's the primary reason I got it 
is so that I could teach in it. I really needed the back support, something I could fully lean back on, but that also I could adjust exactly the right angle for that. And this is the angle I use to teach. It's great because I feel like I'm leaning back, but I don't look like I'm leaning back the same way that in a lot of chairs you kind of get that loungy thing going on. Nobody wants to feel like their music teacher is just like lounging while they teach them. So it's been really great for that. It's very adjustable. It goes up this high if you want it, or it drops down here. I keep it on the lowest uh, just because camera angles work out best with a mandolin or a fiddle in the lower setting. Um, I do raise it up sometimes for something like chess where that doesn't matter. Uh, right here I'd be most comfortable with it raised just a little bit more. Right about there. When you're raising and lowering, it doesn't feel weak at all. And one thing I was concerned about when I was putting it together was how did the bottom, the ceiling fan looking thing, how did that connect per permanently to the top? Because I didn't see any way to actually connect them. Well, it turns out when you put that top on it and sit on it, uh, that fitting just compresses really tight as best as I can tell. And I can pick up the chair without without dropping any pieces off of it. I probably shouldn't pick it up by the arms. This is a 60 pound chair. So it's on there pretty sturdy. I'm not worried about it anymore, which is nice. So I haven't been using the back support and the neck support. They're great, but for teaching lessons, the angles worked out better for me not to use the back support. And although the neck support, surprisingly, is in just the right place for my neck, I never thought that would happen. The, the neck supports are always way down on my shoulders. So. Even though this lines up really well for me, for teaching, it doesn't feel that good to me to, to lay my head back. And for gaming, I, my TV is not above me, so I can't really lean back. Uh, same for my computer when I play chess. So I haven't been using these, but they, they're still great. I am going to show you how to install them, uh, because that's one thing we didn't do. I had set them aside and totally forgot. It's a little tricky installing them. It's not hard to do, uh, but it's just that... Uh, the instructions, the picture is not very good. So here's how it goes. So the lumbar support just goes right here and you've got two short straps on the end here and those go down in between the seat and the side of it inside this hinge. So it's kind of hard to fit through there. You just have to kind of finagle it through and it's equally inconvenient on both sides. Now, here's where there's a discrepancy is the picture in the instructions is showing these straps coming up over here. And I tried that and it's actually pretty great with the straps here because it's nice and tight. There's no slack in the, the elastic there. Um, but I realized it didn't look like the picture. So I looked up the picture again on Amazon and there were no straps coming up over here. They sure look like they're coming through these two holes. So I do think that's the best, and it's a little hard to do by yourself, but you could totally do this. Reach around here, put one strap through, reach the other strap through, and now hang on to both of those. Grab the bottom strap, connect it. Grab the other bottom strap and connect it. Come on, there we go. It's a little twisted, but I'm not gonna worry about it because I'm gonna take it off anyway. So as you can see, it's a little bit loose. It's fine, it'll be where you need it to be, but you might have to like scoot it around a little bit. Now, if you do what's in the picture in the manual, like this, well, now it's not even staying. <laughs> Well, the other day I got it to stay, but see, now it's not even staying. So that's probably not the way to go. Uh, better just to go right through here. And then I would tie a knot in the strap if you need it to be tighter. Um, that's just probably the most practical thing to do. Now the neck rest is a little tricky, uh, but between the uh, instructions and another YouTube video about this chair, I've, <laughs> I can tell you how to connect it. So it comes with this little ring here and the pad itself that has this elastic on the back of it. 
So what we do is you hold up the pad here. I'd keep that ring just on a pinky there. Hold up the pad here, and this is a weird design. You pull it through one side, the elastic here. You hang on to that. And then you stick part of the elastic through this side. So this is a single piece of elastic that I've pulled through to make two little loops. And now you can connect it. And this I wasn't exactly sure about what angle it's supposed to be at. <laughs> Um, so I think, tried a couple things here. Yeah, see now I don't even remember how to do it. And this is just poor design in my opinion. Oh, here we go. I think this is what you do. So I went through the top and the bottom on either side. So the slits are up and down here. The straps are around that middle. And it's not going anywhere. Uh, kind of a stupid design just from usability and practically it's not great either. It's uh, This headrest is a little loose too. But again, you could tie some knots in the straps or come up with some other means of attaching it. So I'm going to take those off because I don't use them and then tell you more about sitting in the chair. Now this chair also leans way back. Like way back. <laughs> and although it feels like I'm in a tip, I'm not, but this is scary. Like, I'm never going to do this. <laughs> um, I don't know why it lays that far back, uh, why anyone would need or want that, but it does. If that's what you're looking for, uh, then it does that. Uh, not my speed. Uh, the other thing about this chair that I really liked is the armrests. I've still got the adrenaline pumping from thinking I was going to fall again. That wasn't my first time leaning it back. So the armrest can swivel out. So right now it's at an angle like this if I wanted my elbows out. It also swivels the opposite way, bringing your elbows in. And then, of course, they raise and lower. Not super low, but as I said, low enough for me to be able to play the fiddle, and that's really hard to find in a chair. So that's about it for the chair. I really like it. I hope this video has helped you either assemble yours, uh, quite possibly after feeling super frustrated, uh, hopefully you assembled it and didn't have any trouble. If you have questions or comments, anything you want to add to this video, uh, just say something in the comments below. Uh, but yeah, if you didn't put together your chair yet, hopefully this helped you figure out if this is a chair you want for yourself. And if you're just shopping for chairs, hopefully this video helped you figure out whether or not you want this chair. It's not cheap. I paid $400 for it but it's really worth it to me. I'm really happy I bought it and I think it's gonna work for me for a long time. It's heavy duty and it's comfortable. You know, people said that the seats were too hard in the reviews and that was not my experience. It is firm, but I really like how it is. And just everything about it is super comfortable for me. So uh, if you are my size, so 6'3 and 260 pounds, then this chair is gonna fit you great. You know, even as big as it seemed like it was, um, it's not that big if you look at me sitting in it. It's not as big as it seemed like the chair was going to be. Um, the width of the shoulders is really great for my size. So if you're about my size and weight, you're going to be really comfortable. If you are taller than me, it still is probably going to work out okay. If you are a lot shorter than me, this would be a lot of chair. And the headrest is not going to be in the place you need it to be. It's going to be behind some part of your head. So that's something to consider. Um, if you are wider, there is a lot. Just from my size, I've got a, a hand each still on either side. So you've got a lot of width. And I think it's really a good chair for anybody who either shops in the big and tall section or is close to it. And especially for anybody who's tired of chairs that are just built too small for us. It's really nice to have something my size. Uh, so if you decide to buy it, I'd really appreciate it if you use my link down in the description. It's a great way to help this channel out that doesn't cost you anything. The items are still the same price as if you didn't use my link, and it just helps out the channel. So that'd be awesome if you could. Also, don't forget to tap that like button and subscribe, and I'll see you all in the next video.